So what I've just quickly gone and done is um, input my mobile call that I use for the mobile, which is VK2 MRXM. Uh, now I've actually registered that call as well. You can register a whole bunch of calls. You, you only, I think, have to register the one call, um, but you can specify whether you're mobile, portable, home base, etc., etc. If you want, um, and it doesn't hurt to register those calls as well. Anyway, I'm just going to now. That's pretty much immediate, and I'll, I'll switch over to that as far as the radio goes. So when I key up, that's actually going to broadcast that, and I'm just interested whether it's still going to recognise the call, uh, or whether it's going to not recognise that it's coming from the portable call, and and decline my uh, ability to control the hotspot via RF. So let's test it out. Okay, sorry. Or we're already linked, um, so what we're going to do is try and delink. You can see it's receiving the command uh, and that worked. I've just gone back in and, and just quickly put in a VK test um, for the purpose of this test. Uh, again, keeping in mind running low power, um, <clears throat> we're assuming that this scenario is going to work and it's going to decline um, our ability to connect RF and we're running low power sort of across, we've tested all the frequencies. So what I'm gonna do is issue a connect command or a link command, uh, again to reflect the one. Uh, but at this point, I'm putting my call as VK test, and hopefully we're gonna get declined because uh, we've said only to accept my call, which is VK2 MRX. So here comes the command, and it's saying RF command uh, from VK test, access denied. So what we've done here, we've gone back into settings, gone to linking, uh, enable linking authorization filter. I've just put in VK2 MRX rather than the portal. That's going to be giving me some issues there. Um, make sure you've got allow stations listed rather than blocked. Go back and we're going to issue a link command again. And there's the link command and we're connected. The information that I've downloaded uh, as far as programming the radio goes, uh, all this sort of stuff is going to be need to be revisited. I guess this is the biggest challenge with... So what you see here, this is effectively how you need to program a D-Star radio. Uh, and I guess this is one of the issues and why they need lots of memory positions. What I actually see on the left there is a duplication of all the different... Um, uh, of, of the frequency 146.375 which is the repeater that I typically use which was VKE2RAG uh, port C now because effectively any command that you want to give it requires a duplication of so if you want to connect to VK2RDS uh, uh, port A and link um, you filled repeater uh, 1 Hang on, we'll just turn VK6 that down. Um, so effectively what you see is that we've got to duplicate the information in repeater 1 and repeater 2. Um, and so it's obviously because it's going to be the same frequency as the repeater. Now if we wanted to connect to RDS port C, um, again, it's the same frequency. Uh, your call is the only bit that changes. Um, and obviously all the other information, all the other fields are the same. Uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. So effectively, even though none of this information over this side changes, uh, none of these two fields change all the frequency, and the only thing that's actually going to change is your call, um, when programming the radio, effectively that's going to use a memory position every time you want to do it. Even though you're going through the same repeater, and chances are you're going through the same port, as you can see here, it requires a memory position. Now, if you've got a whole bunch of repeaters or something in your local area, and you want to connect to... Uh, all these different options and you want to use the memory positions to do so you can see programming a D-Star radio becomes I don't want to say a nightmare but very very time consuming uh, so at this point because I'm all programmed up uh, for the purpose of using you know, VK2 RAG uh, as my connection point is the repeater that I'm going to and using their gateway now because I want to use my node adapter I'm going to have to go through and uh, well effectively what I can do is delete all of these I can delete these two positions because I can issue a link command uh, without that information in those two fields but I'm going to have to go through and change every one of these frequencies there we go, I'm going to have to go through and change every one of these frequencies um, so I can 
still use these memory positions and use them for linking uh, via my hotspot. So at this point I'm certainly open to anybody's advice on, on how to program the radio to most effectively use it as far as programming goes and, and, and minimising um, duplicate entries and all that sort of stuff um, you know, and maximise efficiency. So if you've got any pointers there, certainly throw up a post, make a video and, uh, and share your knowledge. Um, I'd really like this to be a start of a forum or, or a sharing of knowledge you know, via the comments etc. So if you've got literally any information that you feel uh, could be valuable to anybody uh, who's looking to get into D-Star into or has been in D-Star for a long time, um, jump on, post up and uh, throw up your comment.